I refuse to be stressed by my struggles. I refuse to be controlled by my circumstances. I know that God is preparing me for greatness. Grace and peace to you all in Jesus' mighty name. Welcome to another edition of Take Care of Your Heart. Today I want to emphasize such an important principle for us as Christians. The understanding that as a believer, your situation serves a purpose. And look, the fear of your situation loses its grip in your life when you understand that situation serves a divine purpose. So be blessed right now as you open your heart to receive his word in Jesus' mighty name. By divine design, you have a good destiny. Look, God never created anyone to be a failure. I don't care what lies Satan may have whispered in your ear, what society may have told you, that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not beautiful enough, you're not this enough. No, you have been given a good destiny by divine design. That incredible photograph of tomorrow has been planted within you by the Holy Spirit. In fact, you are a work of art. But to become God's person, you must follow his process, just like Joseph did. You see, at the time Joseph saw this dream, this vision of his future. He was too young to appreciate the glory that lay ahead of him. And he was too inexperienced to handle the position that God prepared for him. So in his journey to the throne, God prepared three stopovers, transit points. Number one, the dry pits where he was cruelly thrown by his envious brothers. Number two, Potiphar's house, where he was wrongly sold into slavery. Number three, the prison. The prison where he was sent after being falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. Now, to the carnally minded person, all of these stopovers looked like foolish things. But these were God's way of preserving Joseph for the glory ahead and preparing Joseph for the assignment ahead. I repeat once again, people of God, as a Christian, the challenges you are facing today are simply a transit point to connect you to your destiny. Don't get stuck in a stopover. Don't get stuck in a stopover. What's the first lesson we're going to take from the life of Joseph today? If you consider what happened to Joseph, you will see that the situation he encountered was in direct conflict with his dream, with his destiny. In fact, we can clearly say through the case of Joseph that God's providence often seems to contradict his purpose. What, what do I mean? His divine wisdom often seems to contradict the course of natural events. What Joseph faced was opposite to what his dream suggested. He was destined to be head, to be at the top, but he found himself at the bottom of the dry pits. He was destined to be a leader, and he found himself in slavery and servitude. He was destined to become a source of freedom for his people. And he found himself in the prison cell. 
perhaps you can relate. Perhaps you too can identify. Many of us here today, the situation we are facing seems to contradict the promise of God for our lives. What we are facing does not agree. It doesn't seem to guarantee the fulfillment of God's promise and purpose in our lives. I've heard so many people come and say, I don't understand. Why am I sick when God has promised me good health? Why, why, why am I in debt when God has promised me abundance? Why, why am I barren when God has promised me fruitfulness? Why? I, I remember a young brother came to meet me in the church one day after service. And he, he said, brother, I just want to ask you a question. I recently became a Christian. And one thing I don't understand, I've been watching them on your TV. I see people giving testimony of breakthrough blessing. But me, after I became a Christian, my challenges became worse. Since I became a Christian, it's like the attack increased. What's going on? He was confused. Little did he know that the tougher the challenges, the greater the glory. He was only being prepared for greatness. Challenges are parts and parcel of greatness. But in such circumstances, in such situations, it's so easy for us to begin to look at God in a bad light. Why is this happening to me? To begin to compare ourselves with others. To begin to, to fight human enemies and to begin to create imaginary enemies that don't even exist to try and point the finger towards someone because of the situation we're facing. It's so easy for us to lose focus and abandon our post. And by so doing, many people today get stuck in their stopover. Look, look at Joseph. It would, have, it would have been easy for Joseph to say, where is God? Where is God? God revealed to me my destiny and here I am at the bottom of this dry pit. But instead of asking, where is God? Joseph simply asked this question, where is my dream? In other words, I don't belong here. I know where I belong. I know where I'm going. My destiny does not agree with this. My dream does not suggest this. This is just a stopover in my journey. This is just a stage in my journey. This is not to impair me. This is to improve me. I refuse to be stressed by my struggles. I refuse to be controlled by my circumstances. I know that God is preparing me for greatness. In the face of your storm today, how many of us have said this? How many of you have talked to yourself saying, no, look, this is not where I belong. I know where I'm going. I know where I belong. This is not where I belong. I'm not going to give in to the trap of the devil. I'm not going to give in and start grumbling. I'm not going to give in and start complaining. I'm not going to give in and start lamenting. No, I know that God who took me to this trial will see me through this trial. It would have been very easy if you put yourself in the position of Joseph. It would have been very easy for him to begin to Nurse self-pity. Why? Why me? Why, 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 why? What is happening? God, are you really there? It would have been easy for him to begin to compare himself with his brothers. Look at Reuben. Look at God. Look at Simeon. They're there enjoying with my father. Here I am in the prison for nothing, doing nothing wrong. I did good. They repaid me with evil. But I want you to take note of a valuable truth. When Joseph was in the prison... If he had been so busy lamenting, grumbling, moody, depressed, sad, overcast, overwhelmed by his challenges, he would not have had the time to listen to the complaints of his co-inmates, let alone interpreting their dream. But the interpretation of the dream of the cupbearer of the king was the link that finally took him to the throne. If he was so busy 
licking his own wounds, nursing grudges towards his brothers, seeing God in a bad light, he would have missed the opportunity to help and interpret the dream of the cupbearer, which finally became the link, the connecting point, the stepping stone that took him to the throne. Let, let me, to illustrate this, I want to share with you a true story. This happened to me. Several years ago, I was on a journey flying from South Africa to Greece, and I had a transit, a stopover in Dubai, the airport's there. And when I looked at the time, I had three hours in between flights, between arriving in Dubai and the flight leaving off to Greece. So I looked at the situation, I said, well, three hours, I was quite tired after a uh, not sleeping much the night before. I said, let me just sit down a little bit and relax. And in this airport, there were some dangerously comfortable seats. Seats that are too comfortable for an airport. They're not supposed to be that comfortable. I sat down in this seat. It was one of those seats where when you sat down, your leg goes up and your head goes down. I said, Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. And I looked at the time, I said, let me just rest for 10, 15, 20 minutes, move to the gates. I closed my eyes. As I opened my eyes, do you know what I heard? This is the final call for flight X13 to Greece. You are about to leave now. running like a headless chicken. I ran so far, I realized I left my luggage at the seats. I ran back, had to collect it, running up and down. Where's the gate? Where is it? I'm gonna miss the flight. Not knowing the gate is at the far end of the airport, the furthest possible point. By the time I finally reached there, sweating, looking disheveled, dismayed, the lady kindly said to me, I'm very sorry, sir, your flight has just left. She now said one word. She said, but sir, we called your name and no one came. Let my experience serve as a lesson to you. Because I got caught up in the transits, I got stuck in the stopover, I missed my flights. And when they called my name, I didn't hear. Do you know that many people here today have missed their flight to freedom because they were so busy dealing with the troubles of transit? Many people today have missed their flights. We've been so caught up in our sickness that we missed our flight to good health. We've been so busy worrying about our poverty that we missed our flight to prosperity. We've been so busy battling our barriers that we've missed our fight to breakthrough. We've been so busy stressing out about our struggles that we missed our flight to success. And God is calling you. My son, it is time for your flight. My daughter, it is time for your flight but you were so busy that you didn't hear his voice. And you got stuck in your stopover. You were too busy worrying, too busy grumbling, too busy thinking about the challenges, thinking about the circumstance, thinking about the situation. Whereas it's just a transit point. It's not your destination. It's not your final landing point. It's just a step over. It's just a stepping stone. It's just a stopping interval. Why are we so consumed by our trouble when it's simply a stepping stone to our breakthrough? Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. Don't get stuck in a stopover. Don't get stuck in a stopover and miss your flight to freedom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God Almighty. Listening to that sermon again, I, I remembered a, a song, a Christian song that I often used to listen to. And the lyrics of this song are so simple, but it says this, God is God. 
and I am not. For I can only see just, just a part of the picture that he is painting. And I love that understanding people of God because so often we get consumed, overwhelmed, caught up by the moments, the issue on the ground, the worry, the, the agitation, the fear, the tension, the pressure of that moment, that situation that we miss the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that this is bigger than us. It's bigger than us because we serve a big God, <laughs> bigger than our, our concerns, bigger than your worries, bigger than your fears, bigger than your anxieties. We serve an awesome God who can use foolish things to achieve his divine purpose for our lives. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27. What an awesome, awesome God. He is sovereign. He is supreme. He is the owner of your destiny, the author of your future. He holds your life in his mighty, mighty hands. So, why worry? Why fear? Why compare yourself with others or, or measure your Christian life by your situation? No, people of God, no. We serve an awesome God. And do you know that God can even sometimes allow us to encounter evil? Not that we should submit to it, but that we may overcome it and his name will be glorified in the midst of that situation. So, look, perhaps right now, as you're watching this, you're passing through your own moment of transit. You're in your time of transit right now. Let the word of God encourage your heart right now. As a Christian, even when the present signs, the current situation tends to suggest there's no hope, there's no way, there's no future. When God is supporting your position, the best is always yet to come. So take heart and take hope, people of God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me for this uh, edition of Take Care of Your Heart. And remember, continue, continue to seek God's heart to see life clearly in Jesus' mighty name.